Hello and welcome to AEF TV in association with uh, Angerati. And I'm joined now by Paulinas from Nam Power. Um, firstly, welcome. Uh, th thank you for making the time to be with us today. And uh, uh, you know, w one of the things that I'd like to explore uh, with you is, you know, what are the type of investment opportunities uh, that uh, uh, that exists within uh, Namibia? And uh, you know, just give us a, a, a sort of small overview of what's happening within the power sector in that country. Yes, no, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Um, as you are well aware, there is a shortfall of power supply in the whole SADC region and uh, NAM power or Namibia is not an exception to that. Uh, each and every country in the SADC region is now busy with a capital investment program to bring uh, additional uh, generation capacity online. In the case of Namibia, we have got a 17 billion rand uh, uh, program, investment program. Uh, involving you know, the construction of uh, different types of power stations ranging from hydro, gas and renewable energies. And uh, 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 what's, what's the outlook in terms of the power mix? I mean, you know, power isn't one of those things that you do overnight, so you have to have a long-term plan about it. And uh, can you share with us a little bit about, uh, uh, as much as you, uh, 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 you're aware, uh, you know, what, what is the sort of long-term outlook? How would you like to see the power mix within Namibia? Yes, um, yeah, what you need to understand is that there are no quick fixes when it comes to the creation of additional generation capacity. So for that purpose, we have uh, come out with a short-term, medium-term and long-term program. So explain a little bit about each of those stages. I, I, I'm quite interested to hear how you're going to do it short term. Short term uh, basically involves you know, the, the, the control and management of the load. Basically to suppress the load and normally we use the concept of demand side management. For example, we have embarked upon the process of procurement and free installation of LED bulbs. Repla right. Replacing uh, conventional bulbs with uh, bulbs that are uh, less uh, uh, energy intensive. Basically, with that, you will suppress you know, the use of electricity. The other uh, program, demand side management program, is, for example, the, the installation of solar water heaters. Instead of using uh, conventional uh, water heaters, which consumes a lot of electricity, you warm your water basically with, with solar, with sun energy. And, and when you've done your projections, you know, you, you, you know those two programs and, uh, and maybe a few others, you know, what, what effect are you hoping that they're going to have on your load? There is going to be a load saving of uh, about 60 megawatts. Right. Just being, uh, just through uh, the introduction of those two programs. And uh, uh, the uh, you know LED bulbs, that's fine. You can give those away. Solar water heaters, they're a bit more expensive. You probably can't give those away. So, uh, so how are you constructing the sort of finance models around that? You see, it's correct. Yeah. These, are, these are very expensive uh, devices. You can't give it for free. Mm -hmm. But what we are doing is uh, we give incentives to willing buyers, those with the capability to do so, and those who realize a, a, a benefit, a saving from uh, 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 participating in the program. What we, what, we, what we normally do through this program is for, to provide a subsidy of between 15 and 20 uh, percent of the total cost of the installation. And I know there are many, many Namibians who are really willing to participate and benefit from that, that subsidy. But I also know that the banks, you know, they are knocking on the doors. They want to finance you know, such, a, such a program. I, 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 uh, so, so there the, 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 the are two incentives. One is to reduce your energy bills uh, uh, over time, and the, and the other one is you're, sub, uh, you're, you're subsidizing it as well. So, 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 you know, so we've walked through the short term. You know, can, can you sort of give us an idea of the medium term plan? The, the medium term involves more the import. We know there are countries in the South region which are in a surplus situation. Currently, for example, a country like Mozambique, they've got a lot of gas, they've got 
more surplus, which they can share actually with the region. Yeah, there are also countries with a surplus, especially during certain times of the, of the day, for example, during off-peak. Yeah, these are the types of uh, programs we are looking at, importing uh, energy from the region uh, during the times of the day when those countries are in, in a surplus. But of course, that will require also uh, the availability of the transmission. Uh, uh, stable. Uh, yeah, I was going to come on to that because it, yes. it, it, it's one of those things that have been uh, uh, kind of coming up uh, uh, all through the interviews as well. It's just like people are saying, oh, well, it's uh, fantastic that uh, we're building these plants and we're generating the power, but how do you evacuate it? How do you get it to places where it needs to, uh, needs to go? If we, if we can segue a little bit towards uh, to the transmission side of things, you know, how... Uh, uh, What's that looking like? How, how's the outlook for that? No, the outlook looks good. Uh, for example, in the SADC region, we are working through a SAPP, Southern African Power Pool, mm -hmm. where uh, transmission integration has been uh, adopted as one of the priorities for the region. This just no, it does not make any sense to build power stations without consider, considering you know, transmission of, uh, of that electricity. Yeah. So in the region, we have uh, uh, managed actually to bring uh, interconnectors, a number of interconnectors in place. Yeah, for example, we got the central corridor, uh, the, the high voltage transmission line link, linking uh, Zimbabwe, Botswana and South Africa and also through Namibia. At the present moment, we are busy uh, with the planning and implementation of the so-called Zizabona uh, uh, interconnector uh, involving the construction of the line uh, from uh, Zimbabwe through Zambia and Botswana to Namibia. So when you remember about uh, three to four years ago, Namibia completed a high voltage uh, uh, DC link, uh, linking uh, the northwestern part of the country with central. Mm. So basically for the purpose of wheeling electricity from the north through Namibia also to South Africa. So I think those interconnectors are there. And the good thing is also that Namibia is already well connected with South Africa. So wheeling of electricity, I think it's definitely not a problem, especially with those interconnectors. In place. And, uh, 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 and then, you know, if we can continue our walk through, so we've done short, we've done medium, what, what, uh, what's the long term? The long term is now uh, these big uh, uh, capital projects mm -hmm. like Kudu, Gas, uh, the uh, uh, flagship uh, national project in Namibia. Yeah, and also the the, 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 the Bains Hydro power project on the border between Angola and Namibia. Those are the big uh, projects we are implementing in Namibia, but unfortunately, these projects are big and they take a lot of time to plan and to, to implement. Yeah, I mean, people sat in this chair as they're talking about 10-year uh, time scales uh, 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 and things like that. I, 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 you know, one of the, one of the other questions I, 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 I wanted to probe uh, is uh, and people have been uh, sort of saying this as well is you know what is your outlook in terms of you know you mentioned the interconnectors is the blend between reliance on power that isn't yours so not within the country as opposed to power that is within the country you know so, so this goes back to the energy security question you know this is like a how how far do you think you need to push in terms of you know, having all of the power that Namibia needs generated within Namibia? Or are you quite relaxed about having you know, a reliance on uh, your neighbors, as it were? You know, uh, that's why we have got a, you know, the regional block, uh, SADC. And of course, under SADC as a political uh, body, we have got uh, SAPP. Now, this is our energy trading for, forum where utilities normally come together, plan, and make sure that we harmonize our plans. And also funding them you know, collectively when necessary, when it comes to projects which benefit the, the region. So yeah, we have uh, run away from that concept of um, self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. So that is an old concept. So we are rather supporting the concept of interdependence. 
So you're, 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 you're taking a regional view because obviously the, you know, there may be areas which, uh, where it makes more sense to have hydro and uh, other areas where, uh, uh, and so on. So uh, uh, just as we're kind of coming to the end of our time here uh, and uh, uh, in the studio as well, one of the things, again, you know, we are at AEF, um, you know, uh, the mics may be picking out some of, uh, some of the background noise and so on. Uh, what I'd like to ask you is, you know, what are some of the conversations that uh, you have had or, uh, you know, talks that you've seen that give you uh, encouragement? Um, and then, or, or indeed, maybe, you know, you're hearing things and you're like, going, I can't believe we're still, you know, hearing that. I can't believe we're still talking about this. No, no, uh, we, we learn a lot, actually, uh, mm. through these uh, conferences. Yeah, apart from uh, you know the the the, 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 the presentations mm. uh, um, and discussions in the in the conference room, there's also a lot of networking taking place, and also looking at different types of technologies. There is an exhibition uh, where different products are being portrayed. You know, it is really an opportunity to to to, to learn many many things. Mm. So, let me pick up on the technology piece. Uh, uh, are there any technologies that you're looking at uh, in particular, and are there, are there any sort of technologies that you're particularly excited about, which which may be early stage technologies now, but you're like, a, you know, that that has got real potential, and uh, you know, uh, I hope it matures a, a little bit faster because people have been talking about solar in particular, where the, 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 they're almost saying, oh, it's reaching grid parity, and some commentators are saying, no, it's nowhere near. What's your view? No, uh, specifically renewables, because I see renewable as a future, mm. not only in the world, but also in Namibia. And uh, Namibia has already gone an extra mile in uh, promoting the use of renewable source of energy. And I know the technology is uh, getting more and more mature and even getting cheaper. So one of the issues I'm really interested in during this conference is really looking at uh, different types of renewable technology, not only solar, but also wind and the uh, environments. And, uh, and uh, 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 again, a final question to you before we uh, before we wrap up. You know, uh, there there's been a lot of talk around uh, people saying that okay, you, what is going to happen in Africa? What, what what would be the ideal way is that rather we'll have a blended distributed grid and. Uh, you know, we're happy to have off-grid power and microgrids and uh, and things like that. Yeah, you know, can I just have your view on uh, on that? You know, do, do you think that 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 is true, or do you think actually this more, uh, you know, what what we have in the UK, for example, this more, uh, you know, central network is is the right way to go? Yes, I think you need the right mix. In mm. the case of Namibia, our energy white paper is very very clear that you need a mix, a blend of, mix of different types of resources. Mm. So you need a combination of uh, conventional. When I'm talking of conventional, I only, only don't talk of uh, hydro or gas. I talk about the combination of hydro, gas, coal, and whatever we have got. But then you also need a mix of uh, renewable as part of your mix. And when I talk of renewables, I only don't talk about uh, <coughs> solar. I hear I mean solar together with a, a wind and, a, and biogas and, and so forth, but also a little bit of uh, imports. You know, you need that type of mix to enable you to be sustainable. So you, you're pursuing a, a sort of blended en energy strategy. Again, my words, you know, yes, that <laughs> on, on, on that side of things. Yes. Well, uh, listen, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, thank you as well for watching. This has been another interview for AEF TV in association with Angelati. Thanks again.